Hi, Palabo here. While I'm working on episodes for the next season, I'll give you some flashback episodes. Episodes that you might have missed. You get three episodes per week. This one is episode 52 and was recorded in May 2017 from my visit to Quebec City in Canada. Before I click the play button, I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. If you like this podcast, tell a friend. Think of someone in your life that likes to travel and then tell that person about this podcast. I'm dead serious. Do it right now. Send them a message, an email, or give them a call. This is the best way for me to have more people find this podcast, and this would be your way of helping me grow this podcast. If you don't like this podcast, don't. But if you do, please do. Okay, let's go to Quebec City. Bonjour et bienvenue à Québec, Québec, Canada. Vous écoutez présentement le podcast du Radio Vagabond. Meet Palais Beau, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. At the age of 50, he made a bold decision. He sold everything, his house, his car, his furniture, and set out with a quest to visit every single country in the world documenting everything along the way. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. I left Toronto, but I'm still in Canada. And all of a sudden, everybody's speaking French. The signs are in French... The shop names are in French. The people speak French. They do speak English as well, but with this charming French accent. I've arrived to Quebec City, and right now, even though there's a chopper right on top of my head, uh, it is a charming, smaller place than Toronto. The answer's quiet. It's really killing that he's so willing to make a whoopee. Merci, merci. Thank you. Are you a guitar player? What? Are you a guitar player? <laughs> I used to be 30 years ago, but uh, no, not anymore. I know, I know two songs. <laughs> That's my repertoire. That's better than no songs. <laughs> exactly. I know the typical House of Rising Sun. And stuff like oh, yeah. That. Okay. What, what's your name? Bob. Bob. You, you used to live in Toronto, and I just came from there. Can, yeah. you, can you explain in, in, in a few words the difference between being in Toronto and being here? Toronto, very, very busy, 401, and 20 lanes or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Quebec, well, kind of pretty. Look at the spot here, lovely. Yeah, so beautiful, yeah. The St. Lawrence. And, uh, so you retire, and on a Sunday yeah, you just yeah. sit here with your guitar. And play a few tunes, <laughs> old tunes from the 40s, you know. Nothing, yeah. uh, uh, no Madonna. Yeah, so nice. <laughs> Thank you. In Quebec City, I rented a single room on Airbnb in the basement of Mark's house. He's another cool guy that I feel lucky I got to meet. So, Mark, we're here in your back patio, and it's so lovely weather now and so relaxing. Uh, um, is this the normal weather for uh, a May day in, uh, in, in Quebec? <laughs> no, really not. We're kind of lucky today. It is a beautiful day, especially this year. Winter has made its itself like needed wanted but we're getting there does it get very cold in the winter uh well i it depends on what you think of cold let's say it can not every day but it can go down to minus 35 and with the wind factor it goes to minus 45 so yes it can be cold i guess and we're talking centigrade <laughs> yes we are yes This place, the old part of Quebec City, or just called Old Quebec, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's the historical core of uh, Quebec City, and we have them all over Europe, but this is the only walled city north of Mexico. 
both the French and the English regimes have left their mark in this uh, part of the city, uh, which is remarkably well preserved after 400 years. Today I've been strolling through the narrow streets, and if you take away all the tourists and the helicopter that is, for some reason, always hovering over us, it's like traveling back in time. It's an absolutely lovely way to spend a Sunday afternoon, and the fact that the sun is shining today only makes the experience much better. You are listening to the Radio Vagabond podcast. If you like what you hear, please leave a review in iTunes. If you're listening on an iPhone, you can actually do it right there within your podcast app. And now, back to the show. But now I've been in uh, Toronto, and that's in the region Ontario, and now I'm in uh, the Quebec region uh, and in Quebec City. How is Quebec different from Ontario? Ooh, how much time do we have? <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> There's a whole lot of difference. It's it's actually almost two countries. Yeah. Well, apart from the the, uh, the obvious the the language thing. Yeah, of course there is the language, but we're so much more into the left part of the politics. Let's say it like that uh, to simplify and make it faster as an answer. But, you know, like, Quebec was the first place on earth where gays could marry and have Really? Kids. I would yes. I would think that might have been Denmark. No? Actually, no, it was Quebec. Good for you. We were the first place on earth where women could vote, you know, and so on, stuff like... Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's your say. No, no, I, I'm proud of that. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. I I think I was lucky and privileged to be born here, actually. And the only place north of Mexico with a town wall. Uh, I know. I did the research. Okay. <laughs> it, it's, it says so on Wikipedia. So yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Different. Well. Yeah. I, I guess. Yeah. I, I'm sure you're right. You did your research, but you know, I'm not so much into um, walls and no, no, no. and the army and stuff. To me, it's all being a North American and not from the U.S. Guns and walls for me are weird. <laughs> it, they are. If you're from New York, you've seen a, a rifle, an assault rifle many times in your life. I The first time I ever saw an assault rifle close to me in real life, not in the movies, was when I traveled to France in 86. But before that, I had never seen an assault rifle all of my life. We're, you know, it's laid back here. Well, it's a, it's a lifestyle also more laid back. Well, you're especially right now, you're in Quebec City, and it, there is this small aura of laid-back rhythm to Quebec City. I'm a Montrealer of birth, and I grew up there and lived most of my life in Montreal. I love Montreal. I profoundly love Montreal for its difference, for the cosmopolitan part of it. But Quebec City has nice air to breathe, time to live... And you can almost walk to anywhere, mm. you know. Yeah. That's that's kind of like it's nice. Okay, let's 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 do a history lesson. I've been doing a, a lot of extensive research on on, on Quebec uh, on on Wikipedia, and I've learned that it was founded officially in 1605 by a French explorer. Another French explorer built a fort here in 1535, so the French history goes even further back. A few years later, in 1629, it was handed over to the English, then back to the French. But seriously, it was not that big a deal because in 1665, there was only 550 people living here in 70 houses. Almost 100 years later, in 1759, it was captured by the British. A year later, the French took it back. Three years later, the French gave it to the British. And for the next 100 years, it was uh, uh, under British rule. 
Canada got their own independence and their constitution exactly 150 years ago, but the the, the British mark is still here. It's still part of the the British Commonwealth, and uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth is still on their money here in in, in Canada. This fortress I, I mentioned just before, I am on my way to try and go and see that. Right, now I'm trying to make my way down the the, the town wall that I'm standing on. What is uh, what is what's the best part about living in, in Quebec City? It has all the big city attributes, but human scale. As I was saying, you know, you can walk to things. You there is no big skyscrapers. The downtown area of other cities is really not the same as our downtown area it looks like a big village one you know sometimes people say that of quebec city it's a big village but you've got all the city attributes mm-hmm. you you want to see a metal band a folk song singer writer a singer songwriter sorry a good table whatever you want from a city you can have in quebec mm-hmm. but it's human scale Okay, after after visiting uh, this uh, fortress uh, called La Citadel, I'm now a little bit uh, wiser on the on the on the history here. This is actually the place that is the official residence of the uh, Governor General, which is sort of the Queen's uh, representative here in 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 Canada, and uh, his is in office for typically five years. This one's been in there for for seven years, but uh, this is his last year. Uh, so, I was a little bit about the history. It was very interesting uh, to see this uh, this building, beautiful, beautiful buildings. And uh, uh, if you're ever in Quebec, uh, you should uh, you should go and and take that tour. I took the free tour, by the way, and. Uh, it, we were inside the buildings and, and saw the different rooms in, in, in two of the buildings. Very interesting. Quebec, as a, as it also the name of the region, which is enormously big. Yeah, Quebec, the province in st- inside of Canada, there's 10 provinces and two territories. Quebec is one of the 10 provinces, and France can actually fit three times and a half into Quebec territory. Of course, half of Quebec territory is not even civilized. You can take a car from Quebec City, drive for about two hours, three hours, and then it starts to... uh, Uh, Let's say the civilization goes away and you can ride to the north of Quebec for about 15 hours drive and not see a soul for hours. But a a lot of nature out there and, and, and wildlife. Still, yes, a lot of places you can actually, like I said, drive through a small gravel road for hours without even seeing someone. And if you walk into the woods from that road and just sit there for just a few minutes so the animals can, you know, be in confidence a bit, you can see loads of animals here. I mean, bears and moose and wapiti. And what? Wapiti. It's a kind of a moose. Um, you know, there's a big family, right? Elks and uh, moose, and they're all in the same family. But here we've got a, a group of them, a smaller group of them that are called Wapiti. And it's delicious with blueberries. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're listening to the Radio Vagabond podcast. Before we continue, I want to remind you that I have a Facebook page where I share a lot of thoughts, pictures, and videos. You'll find it by going to facebook.com slash Vagabond. And now, back to the show. 
Well, I've really enjoyed staying here. A lovely room in, in, in the basement here, and I, I've got my own private bathroom, and uh, and and we share the, the the kitchen. And you don't mind me sitting in in your living room working on my computer. And I've really enjoyed getting to know you and and your son. Why? Thank you. And it's uh, same thing here. Yeah. That, it was nice. Yeah. And it's very close to uh, to to the old town. Uh, if you're ever in uh, in Quebec City, m- uh, make sure that you stay here with Mark because he's a nice guy and uh, and the place is nice and it's conveniently located. I will put a link to the Airbnb site in my in my show notes. So so here I am in the car uh, with Mark, my Airbnb host, and. This is uh, this is the end of uh, my uh, my episode here from Quebec City. I am uh, off to my next stop, uh, and and actually, Mark helped me find a ride. There's a thing uh, where you share a car with with some people, and uh, I found a car that's going to uh, to my next stop, uh, and uh, Mark is taking me to the gas station where where we're meeting. Well, this is this is normally where I mention my my sponsor. Have you ever heard of a, a website called Wholesales Twenty Five? No, sorry, I haven't. But you, you once in a while, you use hotels, right? Uh, once in every four years. <laughs> <laughs> so when it's coming up to that, uh, I would normally before go to Hotels.com, but this website it searches all of them at the same time. Sometimes one of them has an offer that is cheaper than the other, and Hotels 25, it, it does it for you. It, you don't have to search all the different sites, so that's pretty cool, right? I guess it's worth looking it up, that's for sure. So, Hotel 25? Hotel 25.com. Okay. <laughs> was that close enough? <laughs> that was perfect. Thank you, Mark. And thank you so much for, for hosting me. I've, I've had a great time, and now that we're connected on Facebook... Uh, We'll keep in touch. Same year, it was a pleasure. If you like this podcast, please subscribe in iTunes or the podcast app on your smartphone. You can see pictures, watch videos, and read much more on the radiovagabond.com. Palais can be reached for interviews and public speaking gigs on mail at the radiovagabond.com. I found my ride from Quebec through a website called. Uh, Amigo Express, uh, and it it was all in French. But my Airbnb host uh, Mark helped me uh, f- find out how to how to find the ride, and it was very nice. It was much cheaper than the train or the bus, and uh, in a in a in a small Honda where I was in the back seat. They dropped me off at a metro station, uh, and now I'm uh, on my way to uh, to to my Airbnb downtown Montreal. And I'm so looking forward to that. My name is Pelabu, and I gotta keep moving. See ya.